Our topic is ethical issues related to the use of artificial intelligence based algorithms in the pandemics and other public health emergencies. Uh, sorry. So our main goal is to explore this ethical aspect and we will in particular focus on the problem of transparency. So how do this system make decisions and whether we are able to explain their decisions. Uh, and we'll do in the following steps. First, we'll define the problem of transparency for artificial intelligence. Then we outline some of the ethical dilemmas that emerge because of it. <clears throat> we'll give some examples, and then we will see whether uh, there is a ethical principle or ethical foundation allowing such non-transparent decision-making to take place, in particular within the context of the so-called emergency ethics, which should in principle be more permissive than ethics in general. And I will state some conclusions. Now I give the word to Jonas that, that will present the first uh, three steps. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Vojko. Um, let me start with algorithmic decision-making systems, as this will provide an appropriate foundation for understanding the transparency problem. So algorithmic decision-making systems are based on machine learning, which is a major branch in artificial intelligence. And these algorithmic systems learn to give appropriate answers based on the data and task we give them. In a sense, they learn to make decisions. In practice, they are used by doctors to help them diagnose the diseases, by banks to decide on the approval of loans, by companies to select among candidates who came to the job interview, by police officers to verify the identities uh, of people at the airports and so on. And of course, by all of us, if you just think about many phone apps, uh, email spam filters, internet browser suggestion systems, uh, they're almost always based on one form of machine learning or another. So in machine learning, the problem of transparency the so-called black box problem, deals with the problem that we have no insight into the decision-making process of algorithms. If we take a look at the picture in our presentation, we can see that algorithms uh, presented as a black box in this uh, image, receive a certain amount of input data, which they then use to produce the output data. We can call this output classification or decision. Uh, more complex algorithms are non-transparent in the sense that when we receive their decision, we do not know how and why this particular decision was formed or selected. The problem of transparency is therefore directly linked to issues dealing with interpretability and technical opacity. So the essence of this technical form of non-transparency stems from the fact that algorithmic systems are often difficult to understand even by the experts who design them. The neural network models, for example, are simply too complex for anyone to understand. And what causes these problems is not just the length of the code and number of people writing the code, but also the constant changes in the logic of the decision-making process of the algorithm, because algorithm learns uh, on its own from the learning data, uh, since we're talking about artificial intelligence. And all these problems make interpretation extremely difficult to achieve, and more often than not, any reasonable explanation is therefore completely impossible. So let me use the example to draw this uh, discussion from abstraction into a more uh, tangible reality. Let's say we show the algorithm 20 medical records of patients with diabetes and ask it to look for patterns that are repeated in all of them. We then give the algorithm 10,000 medical records of random people and instruct it to find people who are likely to develop diabetes in the next year. The algorithm will do the job with, let's say, 87% accuracy, but we won't have any idea how the job was done. Well, as you can imagine, there are quite a few problems that result from the use of such non-transparent systems. Some problems are technical in nature, such as the fact that when a system makes a mistake, it is very difficult to detect and correct the mistake. But there are also quite a few ethical issues. Because it is often difficult to find out where and why an error occurred, it is also difficult to determine who should be responsible for the consequences of the mistake. The issue of responsibility and accountability thus remains open and it's closely linked to the issue of trust. 
it is very difficult to trust systems in which it is difficult to trace an error and consequently clearly determine who is responsible for potential errors in the future and who should be held accountable accordingly. This problem of trust not only has practical consequences, but also raises ethical issues, such as do we have the right to refuse algorithmic decision-making about our destiny if we do not trust the system? It seems that that is not always the case. Another problem is that although we want to largely avoid this problem in our decision-making exactly by using algorithms, algorithms are sometimes biased as well. The algorithm may attach too much weight to certain irrelevant input data, for example, to information about race when reviewing data on a person applying for a loan at the bank. This problem is also often the consequence of the so-called garbage in, garbage out problem. It is simply the fact that if the input data is bad, the algorithm can be very good, but the output data, the result, will still be bad. An algorithm can be, for example, trained to diagnose cancer only on data that do not include data on children of Asian descent. The first problem here is that the algorithm will be able to make errors relatively often. The second is that it will not make these mistakes evenly, but the mistakes will be made especially when it examines children of Asian descent. Here we are actually talking about discrimination. It will save the lives of some races and when deciding about other races, it will perhaps often make mistakes that can be fatal for some patients. But the problem doesn't exist only in medicine. We know about AI models that didn't grant loan to black people at the bank or hire women at the job interview. In addition, there is a concern that companies, individuals and institutions that manage algorithmic systems could manipulate the results or decisions of their algorithms in their favor as the verifiability of the decision-making process and thus the credibility of the results are often impossible due to non-transparency of the operation. So in the recent uh, COVID-19 pandemic, all models have, uh, AI models have been widely used. The wide range of use of AI systems in this pandemic could be demonstrated by reviewing examples of systems in all key steps of monitoring the disease. As you can see in the picture, these steps can be represented as detection, prevention, response, coping with consequences, and assistance in scientific research. In the picture, you can see some examples of the use of artificial intelligence at each of the points in disease monitoring process. But just as an example, we will take a closer look at the Blue Dot software, which has been, as you can see in the picture, successfully used um, for detection and giving early warnings. Blue Dot is a software that was developed in Toronto after the outbreak of SARS in 2003. It is designed to detect, monitor, and predict the spread of infectious diseases. It monitors, for example, the movement of 4 billion passengers a year on commercial aircraft, weather data from cell, uh, satellites, local and global news, and uh, it also reviews more than 100,000 online articles in 65 languages every day. In its forecasting, it uses complex combination of data aggregation it combines, for example, the data in which city a new disease was detected with the data in which country, uh, in which country's population of the city travels most frequently and whether the climate in this destination is suitable for the virus. As soon as the software detects specific samples that it deems relevant, it informs healthcare institutions, government agencies, and even companies that are its clients. Shortly after midnight on December 30th, 2019, Blue Dot detected in Wuhan, uh, China, a collection of cases of unusual pneumonia and linked them to the Wuhan seafood and animal market. In addition to this notification, Blue Dot also listed locations that are closely linked to Wuhan as endangered cities and did so in a very concrete way. So based on the concrete uh, tickets purchases made and not just based on an overall estimation of the average movement of the population. All of this was done by Blue Dot nine days before the World Health Organization publicly stated that they had spotted the emergency of a new virus. So in principle, Blue Dot did its job very well. The forecast was fast and correct. But due to the lack of trust in these systems, the scope of the impact of its forecast was, of course, severely limited. The fact that we cannot yet fully trust such systems, although they may save lives in some cases, is largely due to their non-transparent way of decision-making. 
the relevant question arises, in what situations the use of non-transparent systems is justified and ethical? And with that, I give the word back to Vojko. Before moving on to ethical issues, I would just like to also highlight the, the relevance from the legal perspective. And I think that EU is one of the few political entities that actually took this problem seriously. Since it included the issue of transparency in the very famous GDPR uh, legislation. And in a policy paper accompanying this legislation, it stated the following. I quote from the slide, the right not to be subject to solely automated decision making except in certain situations. So this is our human right. As well as we have a specific transparency requirements on the use of automated decision making, namely the obligation to inform about the existence of such decisions and to provide meaningful information and explain its significance and the envisioned consequences of the processing for the individual. So we have something like a starting point for the legislation dealing with this area. But of course, there are still ongoing disputes what this right actually entails. But now let's move to the ethical issues. Uh, as I have announced, uh, we look at emergency ethics as the framework for assessing the appropriateness of the use of such system, systems, in particular for the use in the recent pandemics. So the central question is, or emergencies arising out of an epidemic or a pandemic, a good enough reason to put aside many, if not all, of the ethical, legal, and wider societal concerns about transparency of AI, especially in light of how effective and useful many of these systems are, are or promise to be. So the ethics of emergencies is related to health that fall within the scope of the so-called ethics of public health and includes both dimensions regarding responses to such emergency situations, as well as the readiness of the public health systems and society in general for such events. It is therefore not just a matter of setting ethical frameworks for action when health emergencies arise, but also of duties and other ethical considerations to which we are consigned before like health emergency preparedness. So as an ethical starting point or a principle or a guideline, transparency has a role in the ethics of health emergencies, mainly in connection with trust, public trust, and operational decision makers and policy makers. Here are two quotes which nicely demonstrate this. First quote is from Alice and the second from Jenkins. I quote, Public trust and confidence are essential in public health emergency preparedness and response. And public health decision-making will be most effective generally when it is transparent and has direct links to the communities it serves. Second quote, ethical justification is also required for emergency, for emergency public health measures, because for the most part, public health and public safety authorities must rely on voluntary compliance by a large number of people and voluntary behavior change in turn depends on the fact that people see good reasons for their compliance including good ethical reasons so regarding the transparency and the use of the artificial intelligence based systems we must first pay attention that we usually consider transparency among other fundamental values like safety, health, welfare, and other ethical considerations like short-term and long-term interests, and also legal norms. However, even in the present, present setting of, let's say, a more pluralist uh, ethical framework, AI decision-making systems have a list of problems related to what have just been said. The first concerns the voluntariness and information at this is not entirely clear that these systems involve any kind of consent from individuals. And the second more important concerns the reasons or grounds for the decision taken. Non-transparency means that we cannot point out the reasons or grounds why a system has adopted or recommended a specific decision. 
Uh, let's, let's take a mock-up example. Imagine a system that predicts the spread of an epidemic based on patterns and parameters that are not understandable and achievable to us. And let us say it predicts an increased likelihood of spreading for region A in a given country, and it doesn't predict that for regions B and C, even though the usual statistics do not show relevant differences. In this case, can we say that we know the reasons for imposing restrictive measures in region A and that we can accept them as good reasons, except that we, are, we somehow trust that the system works well? Uh, Jenkins and Ayres define several fundamental guiding principles of public health and emergency ethics, which are harm reduction and benefit promotion, equal liberty and human rights, distributive justice, public transparency and inclusiveness, community resilience and empowerment, public health professionalism, and responsible citizenship and civic commitment. So transparency is included within the existing ethical framework of emergency ethics, but the problem is that transparency is within the system linked primarily with human decision-making agents or institutions composed out of human decision-making systems. So uh, we are faced with the following dilemma. On the one hand, we can clearly define the principle of transparency, which is that a decision must be made in an open manner. The reasons for the decision must be set out and explained and at the same time that they must be understood and acceptable, at least in principles, by the person concerned. And on the other hand, we have a lack of how to apply this to the artificial intelligence systems. And to conclude, this is just the, the start of our wider analysis, but I want to give this as a conclusion in hope less than a minute. So there are three responses that are broadly available uh, in this situation. The first is, to adapt the traditional notion of transparency in decision-making, especially in the field of health, in such a way that the artificial intelligence-based systems, or at least the majority of them, could also be understood as transparency. So we could say it is enough that we, in principle, understand how these systems function. The second response is the adjustment of normative foundation for this area, the core of this approach is to limit the domain of relevance of conventional bioethical principles and guidelines by exclude this, excluding this system from them or simply abandoning the principle of transparency altogether. And the third response is to limit the use of algorithmic decision-making systems only to those systems that can satisfy the usual or traditional notion of transparency. This would also mean abandoning the use of some of the most effective tools to deal with health emergencies. And just to say our own preferred option, our own preferred option is uh, going in the direction of the first response. So thank you uh, for your attention.